At this time, we're going to have our second speaker. And I hope I don't mess this up. <laughs> okay, Sister Marion McKinley. Yay, you got it. Right. Amen. Amen. Okay, praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah. God is good, isn't he? Yeah. Hallelujah. It's quiet up in here. This is God's house, huh? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We're talking about breast cancer. Hallelujah. We're talking about women that have survived. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I look at all this pretty pink and all your beautiful faces. And also, sir, no disrespect, but breast cancer has no respect of person. Yeah. So hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. I bring you greetings from New Hope and Light Church of God under, my, under the leadership of Bishop Dana C. Head and Claudine Head. We are at 8616 Edgeworth Drive. Amen? Amen. So we bring greetings to you. I'm not used to all this cord, all this skirt, all this, this formality stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But I said... Good afternoon, Pastor May Spears and St. Mark's Christian Outreach Center and all the servants of God. I greet you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I thank God for this opportunity to stand and give witness to the amazing grace of God that he showed me. I truly like to thank Pastor Spears and her sister for inviting me. We met when I was invited to Purity Baptist Church under the leadership of Apostle Brown, where Prophetess Lisa, her daughter, asked me to come and speak on breast cancer the very first time. Amen. Long story short, I sat and talked with your pastor and her sister while eating refreshments. She said, I want you to come to, the, to our next breast cancer awareness. I said, okay. When she called, we instantly connected in the spirit of God, and the rest is history. Amen. So I greet you, and I gave you that. Now, I am honored to be in God's presence one more time. Amen. Now, that all the formalities has been taken care of, mm -hmm. let's start this journey. Yeah. My visit to the doctor was routine, no concern whatsoever. Regular mammogram on March the 3rd, 2015 showed no signs of breast cancer. Results were negative. Amen? Amen? I felt something in my breast on June 2015 and not appeared in my breast. I went to the doctor for a routine checkup and work, blood work. Now, by November 1st, 2016, I, was, I needed a different kind of sonogram. And this was how I learned of breast cancer. I'm the first one in my family that ever had breast cancer. I am the oldest granddaughter in my family. I was fearful at first because the diagnosis that I had a tumor 2.6. To me, that was close to three and even closer to four which has been said you can check out with breast cancer if you have stage four. I did not believe at that time, I did not believe my time on earth was finished. I tell you later more about this testimony of God's greatness because he never fails, he's always on time. Meeting with the doctors and the surgeons and the support team as to how this type of cancer was going to be treated. Listening to their terminology, my thought was, this is bad, I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. They gave me all the reassurance they could, could, could with every preventive measure. I cried, but I knew I wasn't going to die. Yeah. Amen. I cried, I knew I wasn't going to die. I did not feel that in my spirit. I did ask how long do I have though, because out of curiosity you want to know. Amen. Don't ever sit there and just let them tell you something and you don't ask questions. All right. Amen? All right. Mm -hmm. 
I just want to hear their diagnosis. Amen? Amen. I believe what God said. By his stripes, I am healed. My children were with me and a very close friend. They looked at me when I asked that question. I just wanted to know. So, long story short, my thoughts was, I didn't want to do chemo. That was the fear I had. The fear I had was chemo. The fear was not cancer. The fear was chemo, amen? Because um, I heard so many horror stories on, on, on chemo, you know? So I, I, I feared that more. I was apprehensive as to how the chemo would, would react to my body and the injection. I was afraid to give myself needles. Man, I don't want a needle. I was sick and tired. I told co pastor, I can't do this. She and the elder came to my house and gently but forcefully told me I had to eat to gain my strength. I fought with them, but that didn't work. It didn't work. <laughs> I had no appetite. Everything made me sick. But I took what I needed to get better. Each round of chemo was difficult to handle. Looking at, looking at my hands and feet bothered me. Because you know, the chemo actually shows in your body and in your fingers. Yeah. And, and I wonder what others thought. But those that loved me encouraged me and told me we can cover that system. So the sisters in the church were there for me. The hardest battle was losing my hair. I had long hair and I favored my hair. But to today, I don't care about no hair. <laughs> I was bald headed. Amen. That was all right. All I heard others say, you can get new hair. And the men, now this was the joy of it all. The men invited me to the bald head club. And it made me laugh to hear them say that to me. They got mad when I got my hair back because I no longer was in the bald head club. Amen? So we had the surgery and we had the radiation. And it says, what I want to leave you is this. Get the best care for you. Try not to take on other people's treatment. Oh. Amen? Amen? But ask questions. Help others to walk with gentle steps. Be there for them with God's joy. Kick the enemy with all the strength yes. you have. Amen. Let him have the word of God and watch him flee. Do your best to give support, letting them know how you can do this. As a coach, cheer for them what they can do. Don't push too hard. Right now, comfort is the answer. Don't ask a lot of questions just to be, just being there so they can feel you care. The word cancer alone is devastating. Yeah. Most of the time, um, they feel, why me? And I ask that question, why me? We look at all sorts of reasons to blame. Reassure them the best you can. Tell them it's okay to scream, holler, cry to the top of your lungs. Kick and be angry so that you can release without feeling, I gotta be tough. You know, people think they gotta be tough when they walking around with cancer. They try to walk around like, it ain't bothering me. No, it bothers us. It's, it's, it really does. Amen? Amen? Those who have endured it know that it will bother you. No, you don't, it says, uh, da, 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 da. No, you don't hurt. It says, you don't hurt and you have no right to express what's good. In other words, some people make you feel like, oh, I got through cancer. I ain't have to go through all that. I ain't do this, I ain't that. Mm -hmm. Each case has its own diagnosis, its own way of being in your body. Amen? I believe if you can be true to yourself, then healing can take place. You need healing too, so don't be afraid to say how you feel. 
This helps them to take the focus off themselves and realize others hurt as well. Remember, your families are in this with you. Amen. Amen. You want to you want to put whomever you talk to at ease so that they can think positively and come out with the victory, knowing that all things are possible and that cancer has no purpose in your life. Come on now. Amen. It has Amen. no purpose in your life. Amen. 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 It's time to shout. The victory, it's knowing to whom you belong. This is the time for God to show who the great I am. Amen. One thing, and I'm closing, be encouraged. One thing I could do is give you a lot about the negativity of what cancer does. But I want to tell you what God has done in my life. In 1986, I was diagnosed with thyroid cancer as well. But I'm here to tell you and to show you that our God can do the impossible. He is the healer and the deliverer. And he put me on a path to tell others about his saving grace. As survivors, we don't let nothing stop us from showing how great our God and Savior is. Use all your strength you have at this moment and tell yourself, I'm a breast cancer warrior. I will fight no matter what comes. My sisters and brothers, all the battles that come, they are to strengthen us so we can know without a shadow of doubt that God is in control and the enemy called cancer is defeated. Hallelujah. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for speaking, Amen. Sister McKinney. Yeah. And I want to thank God for this. Thank God. You're thank more than you. welcome. I pray for everyone here that if you happen to go to the doctor and find out that you're diagnosed with cancer, the first thing is be very, very positive. Mm -hmm. You go cry. You are going to cry. You are going to have emotions. But my greatest thing is, give it to God and watch him work. The journey that my doctors took me on was you can take your breasts off. Mm -hmm. Come on. I elected not to. And the thing is, I try to encourage women, get the chemo, because I cut these off. But guess what? Cancer could be anywhere else within this temple. So if you do the chemo, don't let them talk you out of the chemo. It's rough, but don't let them talk you out of it. Amen, amen. And get it. So if there's anything in this temple, God will take it out. I can't guarantee you it won't come back because I had it twice. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you one thing I can tell you for sure is I'm ready for it when it comes, if it comes again. Mm -hmm. I know that's right. Because yeah. there is nothing on this earth that's 100% nothing. Chemo will make you sick. It will. <coughs> Injections will make you sick. But guess what? God gets the glory. Yeah. And guess who sees you? I'm blessed. I'm 63 years old. People say, you don't look 63. I said, I'm not. But God chose to make me 63. And all that you go through in life, don't let it wear on your temple. But all I say is get, take the key if you can. If you like what you get. I mean, one of my girlfriends just had reconstructed breasts. She just got this week. She just went back in for years. And she would look at her body. And finally she went and looked at her body. 
and she didn't like what she saw. And so she went and had to take the fat and put it in her breast. I said, you're still whole. Hmm. So don't let the enemy tell you you're not whole. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen? If I only had one leg, one arm, one feet, whatever, I'm still living and I'm still a survivor. Amen. I don't care what you go through in life, you are a survivor. Maybe it's not breast cancer, it could be something else. But you are a Survivor. Young yeah. girls, go to the doctor and tell them that you want a mammogram. Yeah. And the reason I say that is because they wait so late. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they don't, insurance people don't want to pay for it. That's right. So that's why they don't test you until you probably already had it for a while. Yeah. Can't say that's nothing to play with. Amen. story, I don't care, because I'm thankful. I'm yeah. thankful. Yeah. I'm thankful. Yeah. And I'm thankful. Thank you, Pastor. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you for getting it out. Yeah. 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 I can tell you all that on that paper. Mm -hmm. But I cried. Yeah. I wanted to die. Mm. I wanted to die. Because I didn't want to take the medication. I didn't want it. They inject you. Yes. They shoot to your breast. Yes, they know. stick stuff up inside yes. you. They yes. do so they many do tests and lie. so many things yeah. before you get the before surgery. You, right. Before you get the surgery. They stick these little things all up under here. We still got them. And I like they still in here. They're we markers still in the my market. body. The markers are still there. Amen. But I haven't told you the rest. Oh wow. I haven't told you the rest. I went through radiation treatment. And after I was diagnosed, my daughter was diagnosed with breast cancer. It's not hereditary, thank God. But she didn't take chemo. She is now still going through. Because her doctor said she didn't need it. But if they would have went on and tried the chemo first, then they would have had a better. While the man was in here, he stuck the needle in my breast. He hit the tumor. And I cried. You know why? Because he didn't know me enough. He stuck that thing straight through the tumor. So the, can the chemo shrinks it. But he that was before. So when the next doctor came, the doctor said, I heard about your bad experience. I said, please. If you're not going to do it right, don't touch me. Because it hurts, you guys. It hurts. I'm not going to sit up here and lie to you. I'm not going to sugarcoat this breast cancer. It is rampant, ladies and men. It is rampant. It's worse than lung cancer. I had no idea until I read the history. We are now having more problems with Breast cancer. Do you understand why? We're the women. We're the speakers for God. The enemy wants to take us away. He wants us gone because we can speak. Most guys don't do a lot of talking, but women do. So I pray that God will release you. And if you go to that doctor and they tell you you have it, you tell them, I got something else to do. Get this mess out of me. Don't be afraid. Because we will say, oh, I'm going to go to another doctor. I'm going to go to another doctor. Why you're actually moving from doctor to doctor, guess what? Cancer is Amen. rapidly eating and eating and eating away at you. I can't tell you not to go to more than one doctor. I just trust the God. If he took care of this 30 Amen. years ago, Amen. I Amen. Amen. Took care of it. Amen. 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 So because Amen. I took the chemo, it couldn't attack my lungs. Yes. So I tell you, Amen. I'm an advocate. I was afraid of chemo, but I'm an advocate for chemo. Amen. 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 Amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen.